All right, welcome back to another episode of Through the Roof. I'm Mason Burchett from True Metal Supply, and today I'm really excited to be joined by Kyle Stumpenhorst from RR Buildings. Kyle, thanks so much for making time to hang out with us, man. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, Mason. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So you're a you're a celebrity and a, and a bit of a legend in the post frame world. I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, uh, you've amassed <laughs> quite a following uh, in, this, in this part of the industry. Yeah, I would say like if you're going to call me celebrity, you got to put like either D or E list celebrity. You got to like make sure that that's understood because I, I I can go anywhere I want and nobody's asking for autographs every day. So. <laughs> I, well, I can I tell you when, when you show it. up at the Frame Builders conference, people start whispering that Kyle's here. So you're a celebrity there, at least. Well, that's cool, man. You know, I I've spent a lot of time and effort uh, putting content out there to help educate people, and and hearing that you know there's some sort of you know buzz around that that means that it's it's doing something. Whether it's all good, I don't know, but it's doing something. So let's jump right into that. You've built your your platform off of. Um, which you're, you're a heck of a lot of fun to watch. You got a great attitude, but you've built your platform off of educating people on basically the post frame industry. This, this part of the industry has really um, risen to, to a lot of notoriety here in the, in the past decade or so. What do you think's driving that? And what made you decide you wanted to start educating people on this? Well, I think first I'll, I'll start with the why I'm doing it and, uh, and then we'll get to why I think it's doing so well or growing so fast. And first off, you know, I came from remodeling and just like residential construction. And honestly, it's like everybody does that. That's kind of the norm and that's what everybody or that's what I always knew or I guess learned. And when I did my first post frame, it was totally different. It was a different set of rules. You weren't going inside somebody's house. You weren't having to work around a ton of other trades. There wasn't a ton of cleanup at the end of the day that you had to make sure because maybe you were in a, in someone's kitchen doing a remodel. So instantly I fell in love with just the being outdoors, starting with a big pile of lumber and then getting to really erect something quite fast. Right. And what I noticed was coming from the residential sector, there was a lot of people that, you know, I was around who would kind of talk in a negative tone about post frame. And they would talk about it like it's just a barn. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to, you know, maybe only have one or two leaks in the roof from the screws. Like it, it just, it's not that big of a deal, Kyle. And for me, it was like, no, this is, this is an opportunity to really shine and set yourself apart from other people because it, it's taken so lightly from most of the industry. And that's really what I set my hat on. And that's how I grew my business was like, not just building post frames, but building like the most immaculate post frames that have the straightest corners uh, the cleanest trim lines. And, um, you know, that's, that's really what drove me to get my business to where it's at. And, and why I think that it has continued as an industry to grow is because first off, everything is expensive these days. I mean, you go talk to somebody about building a new house, it's going to blow you away what it costs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think post frame is, is not as um, intimidating for people if they're looking to be within the like scope of being efficient and building within like this rectangular notion of a post frame. It's, it's straightforward enough that DIYers can say, Hey, I can tackle this. And with, social media and with all the content out there with education that, I mean, personally I've tried to do and others, it's doable. People are like, Hey, I think I can do this. And therefore it's driving people to say, I'm not going to spend all this money to pay someone to build my house. I'm just going to do it. And look at this. I can get all this square footage inside this building and do whatever I want pretty cost effectively, you know, for the most part. Now I think there's a lot of, you know, missed, misinformation about post frame and thinking that it's always going to be super cheap. Uh, but I think that's why it's gained popularity at the onset. So you, you realize that post frame is, is kind of your niche and you, you double down on that. At what point did you, did you have people coming to you saying, Hey, how, how do you do this? Or how are you building that? What point did you realize, Hey, I need to, I need to put out content educating people on this. Sure. So what I realized was two things. First off, I would get calls from people and they'd say, hey, can you build me a Morton building? And it was like, well, 
do you want a Morton building or do you want a post frame? Because mm. I can't build Morton buildings. They won't sell me their materials. Right. I can build you a post frame and it will look similar, you know, a little bit different profiles. Uh, so that was one reason I thought, you know, I need to educate people that a Morton building, that's like saying, can I have an Oreo? It's like, well, do you want a cookie or do you want like specifically <laughs> right, the sure. Oreo? Um, and then the other side of it was just that I was doing jobs. I was building what I thought to be like my best work possible. And then clients at the end were saying, hey, this is this is way better than I was expecting. I didn't know you were going to do this. I didn't know what went into it. I didn't know all these details. And it was like, okay, I need to do a better job getting the the education out to my clients, my future clients, what I'm doing. And it was like, I could either start taking out ads and papers and magazines and radio ads, which would be very hard to to say, mm -hmm. hey, we're doing X, Y, Z. Um, but social media was gaining a lot of momentum and it was a free free thing to do. I could take pictures, videos, and um, educate as much as I wanted or as little as I wanted and tell my story, not just rely on word of mouth from people that were saying, hey, Kyle does a good job. But why does he do a good job? What is different about Kyle than Morton Buildings? And I'm, I'm not picking on Morton Buildings. I'm just saying that that's like the big name that people call out. Sure. Did you find yourself with them aside? Did you find yourself competing against other builders? How did you carve out an, a name for yourself in that area? Uh, well, I think first off, I'm very, very uh, efficient. So me and my crews over the years, uh, right now it's just me and one other guy, Greg. We we love Greg. Yeah, everybody loves Greg. He's a great guy, um, and I'm blessed to have him. Um, He's been with me for 12, I think going on 13 years now. But uh, the the thing that we did was we we really doubled down on a system. We made sure that everything we did was very hyper-focused on like a set of procedures to get from point A to point B. And we also, I would say, knew what our strengths and weaknesses. And I feel like that's my best attribute as a boss or a leader on the, on the team is whoever's with is is trying to put people in the right spot to be as efficient as possible. And so through that and purchasing and investing in the proper equipment and the proper tools to do the job as fast as possible, uh, we were, we're flying. I mean, we're doing quality work and we're doing it faster than four or five man crews in the area. So that, that was something that, hey, I can do this for a good price and be underbidding the competition for the most part when I was starting off and give you a better quality product in even a quicker time. And so, you know, that that spread pretty quickly. And then the use of social media, you know, um, it's been pretty amazing over the years how many clients have called me, didn't even need a bid, didn't need any. They just said, hey, I followed you for two years now. I already know what I'm getting and I trust you. Just tell me when I can send you a check and when you can start the job. <laughs> That's so a testament to your success. <laughs> yeah, competition is still there. I still get people that are, you know, I lose a bid here or there. And mm -hmm. mostly I would say it's it's typically my fault because I'm not hungry enough for that job or mm -hmm. I don't have enough time. You know, there was periods, especially during COVID, I was out two, two and a half years. I lost a lot of work and I lost a lot of people's trust in my ability to perform that work because it was like, I'm only one two guy, a two guy crew, right? Mm -hmm. I can only do so much, and we're just going to focus on quality, 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 not just speed. Mm. Do you interact much with other builders in your area? Um, I would say I know other builders. I've got, uh, I've had other builders that currently have post frame businesses work directly for me that have okay. gone off and done their own thing. Um, I think at some point, so I grew up and I graduated from a town with uh, 19 people in my class. Okay. So very small nice. town. Okay. And I think at one point I counted seven other post frame builder companies in my town. Wow. Yeah. So it is a competitive area. Very so competitive. we see, I know that post frame kind of was born in, you know, in the Midwest. It's really working its way farther down South. I'm in East Tennessee. Um, we're seeing it blow up down here. We're shipping buildings all over the country now. Um, it's, it's really, uh, people are catching on that. It's a thing. What is, what, do you, what would you say, uh, your biggest piece of advice would be to the DIYer that thinks they can tackle the project? Maybe they can, but it's never done this before. What would you, what would you tell them? 
well, maybe I'd say selfishly go go watch a couple of videos. I've got a lot of build <laughs> series from start to finish. But in, in all honesty, you know, there is a lot of information out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that the process is simple enough that if you understand, you know, some math, some simple math, if you understand how to use, you know, your simple hand tools and maybe you got enough people to help or some equipment to help, you know, keep yourself safe, I'd say, you know, you can always try and you can always fail. And that's the only way you're going to learn. Um, Obviously I would love for somebody in my area to give us a call and shout, you know, shout us the opportunity to say, can you build it? But at the same time, I don't know that there's enough contractors that are qualified and that their skill set as a crew is that much greater enough to justify like all the work out there. So what Mm. I'm saying is, if somebody is handy, if somebody cares about quality and they think they can tackle it, their chances of getting it done are probably pretty high compared to finding a quality crew in the post frame sector that will accomplish the goal to their standard. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, connected with so many different people on the internet across the country. So I hear and I see what is going on, what projects look like during construction, because People will send me like my followers pictures and say, hey, I hired these guys. This is what's going on. What do you think? And it's always amazing to me, really, the differences throughout the country and really what is acceptable or just the process to put together a post frame. And I'm like, I I don't want to tell you it's bad. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it this way, you know. So it's Mm. there's just so many different ways to skin a cat. You know, it's uh, you got to just go with what I think you want in the end for your overall project to be. So we, you know, True Metal Supply, we supply building packages, but, you know, at our core, we're a a metal company. We supply residential metal roofing, metal siding, and, you know, obviously there's exceptions to the rule, but the, I'd say the vast majority of post frame buildings are covered with metal roofing and metal siding. Um, What was, what was it like for you getting into the metal game and working with metal as a, as a primary exterior material? And, and at what point did you really kind of master that craft? Well, I think I'm still learning all the time, but uh, I think that metal in general came pretty easy to me. And I'm not sure where the disconnect is for most contractors, because I, I hear a lot that metal just scares me. I don't know how to cut it. I don't know how to handle it. Uh, specifically in post frame, you have metal exterior that it's easy to cover a building with metal but it takes skill to do it in such a way that the metal lays nicely, that your trims don't have tons of oil can in them. Um, I, you know, it's like anything you do something enough, you're going to get comfortable. But for me, I just felt like when I started doing metal, I thought, well, this is, this is way easier to kind of fudge little things here and there. And, if you just pay attention and if you just look at things, if you just take a step back and look, and to be honest, early days of social media, I would get my early drone out. I would take pictures from my scissor lift and I would look at the buildings. And later that night, I might go to make a post and I would be like, Ooh, I don't like the way <laughs> that that trim is lying there. I don't like the the ripple that I see from this angle. And yeah. to be honest, that is what forced me to learn a lot of the tricks to to figure out how can I make a custom trim that will look better in this application? Because if I'm going to post this, if I'm going to stand behind this, it's got to look good. It can't just look, you know, Hmm. like crap. And so um, that is, that's really where I feel like I started to learn how to work with metal was through photography, seeing it from a different light, seeing it after the job is done and not just looking to get the paycheck and get out of there. Uh, That, that forced me to become a better a better carpenter, contractor, metal worker, whatever. So do you have a, I know you have a background in IT. Do you, do you have just a, like a natural passion for the content creation side of it? Um, when, when you kind of decided you were going to build this, this marketing engine and really do the content thing on YouTube? Yeah, I, I think it all boiled down to in the beginning of post frame for me, it was so new, fresh, exciting. I was, I was just, I'm I'm a high energy guy. And when I could go out on the job site, start a day with like nothing. And then at the end of the day, have some trusses hung up and, and I'm feeling really good. I was proud of that. And it was really cool to always take pictures of that real passion that I was feeling. And I was hoping that I was just going to share it and other people would see it and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, 
that's really where it all started. I just wanted to share it because I thought it looked awesome when the sun hit certain spots, when, you know, the, the I don't know. I'm crazy a little bit, but uh, it did take <laughs> off and people were like, I've never seen this post frame thing, you know, because it was so common where I was, but it wasn't so common everywhere else, you know, eight, 10 years ago. Yeah. Was there a point you were like, holy cow, I accidentally built a whole brand online? No, I mean, I still, I still <laughs> think it's, you know, I could stop tomorrow and, you know, there's no telling. I mean, it, it, I, I feel like I would probably just be forgotten about in about six months and people would continue to take off where I, you know, it's like, True. what do they say? Like maybe you, you, you walk so others can run. Mm. I mean, I feel like if I, if I've gotten to the point where post frame is more socially acceptable as a high quality means to an end versus this whole negative, it's like post frames down here, stick frame, timber mm. frame, everything else is up here. Post frames at the bottom. If we could bring that level it out and then other people can take off where I, you know, finish whenever that is and keep, keep that industry growing, I would feel like that, that was my legacy. Like that would be something mm. that I would be completely okay with. I don't have to be the end all be all, you know, what you might say legend in post frame. That's, that's not my goal. My goal is just how can I create content to showcase the, the real greatness of post frame, whether that be quickness of install, uh, energy efficiency, cost, you know, efficiency, all these great things that I see uh, coming from residential stick frame to now residential post frame and your commercial post frame buildings. I see all the advantages, but how can I educate the people and then make it socially acceptable to live in one of these structures and make them look in such a way that, you know, somebody's going to drive by and not be like, that's a barn. That's, that's kind of my goal. Yeah. I think you're certainly already reaching that goal. So I commend you for that, man. I think you've elevated this industry a lot. Um, we, you're, if you walk into our, if you ever come visit our showroom, your videos are probably playing on the TV. So, <laughs> so yeah, That's awesome. uh, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're certainly helping people do things the right way. We, we appreciate that industry wide. So you've done a lot of projects. Plenty of people that are listening to this have watched probably the vast majority of your videos. And you probably haven't videoed them all. What's your favorite project you think that you've done over the years? Uh, well, I'll be honest. I mean, um, I really do love almost all of them. I mean, there's some that I'm like, I'm just glad I'm not there anymore. Uh, <laughs> but but that, that usually boils down to it was a long drive or mm. it was a really long project. I have ADHD. I can't sit in one place. And that's another reason Post Frame really speaks to me because for the most part, you can get in and out. Uh, fairly quickly. Mm. But I mean, I really loved my parents' house. So I built them a post frame back in 2017. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's it was kind of our first real barn dough that didn't look like a barn that utilized post frame that was somewhat high efficiency that had, you know, not just a full metal facade. And, and I get to see it all the time. I get to mm. see how it's performed. I get to see how it's been lived in. So it's just it has a special place in my heart. There's a lot of cool, unique features we did there. I got to just play around a little bit. My mom and dad gave me some freedom. And to be honest, uh, you know, that's probably my favorite, but I'm, I'm, I got a real soft spot for this, uh, my current, our, our headquarters that I'm trying to yeah. wrap up because I, I kind of a culmination of the last, you know, decade or so, 12, 14 years, I've kind of seen a bunch of things that other people have done that I've done, learned and tried to really put it together. And probably in five more years, I'll say that's kind of crappy. I mean, look where we're at now, you know, and, and that would be awesome. Hmm. Have you ever been on a project that really intimidated you and you were kind of like, um, how am I, how am I going to get through this one? So Mason, I've learned, you know, I've been, a, so I started my business in 07 and yeah. I didn't know anything. Like I genuinely knew enough to remodel my own house. I had no back training. I had nobody that was, a, I was apprenticing under and hmm. every project scared the crap out of me until I realized that no matter what, like if somebody's asking me to do something, it's probably already been done before. I'm not reinventing the wheel. So it's doable. And so through like just the confidence to say, I'm going to figure it out, problem solve. And I feel like that's probably my biggest strength is problem solving. I don't get too worked up over, am I going to be able to accomplish a project? I usually get more worked up over, am I going to be able to live up to a standard that I've set for myself? Am I going to be able to, you know, 
walk away from this difficult job and hmm. you know maybe it's an intricate roofing detail that i've never done before but i mean it has to have been done it's not you know it can't be that bad right but am i gonna be able to make it work out and i'll lose sleep over that stuff for a couple nights but i think the more projects you do the more you realize hey we can do anything it's just time and money you know how much time do i got how much money are we going to spend on it but we'll get it done that's a great attitude that's that's the way to do it for sure so you've built You've built this uh, this booming business on the construction side. You've built this marketing engine. You know that's that's people that know marketing know that's a whole different thing on on the back end that you're managing. So you've obviously got a, a lot of business acumen to develop all of this. What's the next big thing? What's what's the next the next move for our buildings? Oh man, I I I always say that I try to go. You know, I go 110 percent on whatever I'm passionate about in the moment. And I'm really bad about looking at long-term goals because I feel mm-hmm. like uh, my opinion has always been a long-term goal of five to 10 years, which maybe is not that long, but today it seems like, think about how much has happened in the last five years. Oh, yeah. So I think, you know, if I'm looking at five to 10 years out and I start saying, this is where I want to be, or this is what I want to do, I am a hyper-focuser. So I will hyper-focus on that. And mm-hmm. I feel like it will totally... Uh, you know, keep me from seeing anything else uh, that would be a great possibility or a great opportunity for me. And I think, you know what, I'm happy right now. I'm doing what I love. I get to, you know, pretty much pick and choose all the projects I want. And I get to share them on the internet. I get to work with tons of different cool brands. I'm not looking for the next thing. I'm, I'm enjoying this and I'm, I'm going to do it. As, and when I get tired, I'll say, all right, Kyle, let's focus on what we're doing next. And let's go 110% that way. And, you know, it could be, I don't know, it could be building furniture. It could be playing disc golf. I, I don't know, yeah. you know, <laughs> okay. but I'm going to do it 100%. That's just my, yeah. that's just my personality. I, I like that. Um, so we, we, I asked about your advice to DIYers. Um, you've also inspired a lot of guys out here to, to follow in your footsteps and, 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 you know, stretch their legs, get out there and build their own post frame business. There's a lot of guys starting out right now in the industry and, uh, you know, you inspired them to get out there and do it. What's your advice to them looking back at all the years you've been doing this when, when they're just now getting started? Yeah, I think, and it's, I think it doesn't matter if you're post framing or if you're doing baths and kitchens and decks, you know, uh, in construction, I find it very simple to stay busy, make money. You literally have, in in my experience, you answer your phone, you get, you return calls and you get back bids in a timely fashion and you treat people with respect and you also follow through with anything that you say you're going to do because nine times out of 10, I have gotten bids and jobs strictly because I answered my phone, strictly because I got back to the contract, the the customer in time with a bid. it's not that hard to do the physical work of building something like that is doable. And I think most people can figure that out, but where most contractors struggle is on the business side on the Mm -hmm. just, you know, you, you, you spent your whole day out swinging the hammer, running a saw, whatever it is, you're tired. And at the end of the day, you want to just say, I'm done. I'm not going to make that phone call. I'm not going to do that bid. Uh, But if you do it, if you get it done and you just focus on, the communication side of being a business owner, man, I think with the lack of carpenters and contractors out there these days, uh, the demand, you'll, you'll have more work than you ever know what to do with. I mean, I, I, I don't know how you wouldn't, and maybe it's different in certain areas, but definitely in my area. Um, I mean, I probably turned down, I'd venture to say two to three leads every week that we just can't handle, you know, and and that's just locally. I mean, with social media, it's probably closer to 10 to 20 across the nation. Yeah. Wow. That's good advice. Uh, I mean, that's that classic entrepreneurial hustle, right? I mean, the guys that make it have just got it. They've got a different pace. They're able to do one more. Yeah. It takes this much extra to separate yourself from the crowd because most people aren't willing to do a little bit extra. Yeah, man, that's good. All right, final question for you, Kyle, before I let you go. Big, big question here. Okay. One of the best parts about post frame is all the tools, right? That you get to work oh, with. If I you agree. if you if you had to give them all up and you could only keep one, what's the one tool that you're keeping in the tool belt? What's your favorite oh, I think tool? 
that's pretty easy, man. That's my Martinez hammer. That's that's pretty simple. Yeah, I mean that yeah. that that thing is you know solid and it's a generational tool. It's not gonna die. It's not gonna you know need a new battery. It just you put a good hand on that grip and you can go to work. It's a good one. I like that hammer too. It's a good one, man. Thank you so much for taking uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us and talk shop. I know uh, I know you're working all the time and talking shop after hours isn't what you probably want to do, but I know people oh, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it means a lot to us, uh, post frame builder show, NFBA shows in Knoxville, uh, next year. Are you going to be there? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's my goal. I mean, unless something comes up that I can't, you know, get away from, but yeah, I always love seeing uh, everybody at the NFBA and, uh, this is a new location. I've never done Knox, Knoxville. So it's be good. Well, that's our hometown. That's where our shop is, Kyle. So now you're, now oh. you're obligated to come by and see okay. true metal supply once you get in okay. there. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's our hometown. So you can come watch yourself on our TV. How about that? Hey, I just want to give you guys a shout out because you're, I've seen enough of your IG videos. You guys have had some really good viral hits out there, uh, roll foreman and stuff. And uh, kudos to you. I've had other roll formers, you know, ask me how to get started. And I said, Hey, look at these guys are doing a true metal, man. They're, they're killing it. So good job. Well, thank you, man. The, the passion that you have about bringing post frame to the level is the same thing we have in the, you know, the roofing and siding industry about bringing metal to the level. So I appreciate you saying Awesome. That. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed what you're listening to hit the subscribe button for us, Kyle knows how big of a deal that is. So uh, hit subscribe and we'd really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time.